Hello, City Church family. Lovely to have you join us today. My name is Devo, and with me today is my wife. Derry, and it is lovely to have you here with us this morning. We have a lovely service planned for you today, and we hope that you stay and be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. And just before we continue, we'll have a quick word of prayer. Father in heaven, we are grateful for today. We are grateful for everybody present here at this moment in their homes. Father, we ask for your blessing upon us. We ask that your spirit will just reach out to us. And we ask, oh Lord, that your Holy Spirit will speak and minister to us today. Wherever we are, whatever our situation and circumstance, we ask that, Lord, we shall meet with your presence and there shall be answers, there shall be fulfillment, there shall be release, there shall be freedom. Amen. In your name, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Yeah, and um, next then we have... The worship team, so we'll hand over to them now to take us in a wonderful spirit-filled worship. We'll see you soon. God bless you.
Thank you, worship team, for that excellent um, worship. Thank you so much. The Lord has turned our sorrow into joy. And that will always be our testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. And right now, we're going to have a quick reading from the book of Psalm. Jeremy? Yeah, I'll be reading from Psalm 138, from verse 1 to 3. I give you thanks, O Lord, with all my heart. I will sing your praises before the gods. I bow before your holy temple as I worship. I praise your name for your unfailing love and faithfulness. For your promises are backed by all the honor of your name. As soon as I pray, you answer me. You encourage me by giving me strength. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And um, that, again, should be some an encouragement to us. The Lord hears us when we pray, mm -hmm. and he wants to give us strength. Amen. It's available for us. All we need to do is ask. He's waiting, he's listening, and willing to answer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And um, just before we proceed then, I just pray that this moment, that Lord, you answer every prayer, every heart crying unto you. Turn their situations around. Amen. Let there be healing. Amen. Let there be peace. Amen. Let there be joy. Amen. Let there be fulfillment, O Lord. Amen. Let there be restoration. Amen. For the glory of your name, O Lord, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Okay, then. And um, we shall proceed. Further worship, communion, and a word from Pastor Michael. We'll see you soon.
Well, good morning, everyone. I hope you are feeling encouraged and blessed as we have shared together in worship this morning. And now as we come to gather around God's word, I pray that once again, we might hear something from heaven that would do us good and help us as we endeavour to live for the Lord as he has called us to. This is the final message in our Life in Lockdown series. And as we have worked our way through the book of Philippians, we have seen how the Apostle Paul did life in lockdown. We've looked at the lessons he learned, the choices he made, and the difference that they made in his life and can also make in our lives too. This morning, as we bring this series to a close, I want to walk us through the final verses of this letter. And there are three things that we will focus on. Uh, the Philippians' concern, Paul's contentment, and the final comments. So our reading this morning is Philippians 4, verses 10 through to 23. I rejoiced greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Yet it was good of you to share in my troubles. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out from Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid more than once when I was in need. Not that I desire your gifts. What I desire is that more be credited to your account. I have received full payment and have more than enough. I am amply supplied now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent. They are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice pleasing to God. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet all God's people in Christ Jesus. The brothers and sisters who are with me send me uh, send greetings. All God's people here send you greetings, especially those who belong to Caesar's household. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. You know, as Paul concludes this letter, he wants the Philippians to know that he is rejoicing greatly in the Lord. And you know what, friends, that's a great place to be in, the place where you are rejoicing greatly in the Lord, the place where uh, in our hearts and our minds and, and in our spirits, we are joyful in the Lord. It's a wonderful disposition to have. And I want to encourage us as we go forward to keep ourselves in that place where no matter what is happening, we are rejoicing in the Lord. It made a difference in Paul's life and it will make a difference in our lives too. Now, the reason for Paul rejoicing greatly at this particular time is the concern that the Philippians had for him. You know, when you're in a difficult season, when you're in a tough place, it's very easy to feel forgotten. You can feel forsaken, abandoned, and even alone. But this concern from the Philippians reassured Paul that he had not been forgotten or forsaken or abandoned, and he was certainly not alone. They had clearly remembered him, and it meant a lot to him. And when you are in a difficult season, knowing that you are remembered by others makes such a difference. The card, the phone call, the text, the envelope, the food parcel, they really do make all the difference. You know that someone is concerned. 
And Paul here is greatly encouraged and extremely grateful for the Philippians' concern for him. A concern that was expressed practically in provision. You know, throughout his ministry, the Philippians had supported Paul financially. However, it had been a while, years in fact, since he had received anything from them. Now, Paul knows and and states that it wasn't that they didn't care or weren't concerned. We see in verse 10 that the fact of the matter was that they had no opportunity to show it. They had no opportunity to express their concern. However, when they were presented with this opportunity, they did something about it. You know, it's one thing to be concerned It's another thing to express that concern, to do something about it, to make the most of that opportunity. History abounds with people who were concerned enough to do something about that concern. And many of those moments in history changed things and made an impact and brought an incredible difference. And we still see that happening today. All around us are people who are concerned enough to do something about that concern. You know, in some small way and nearer to home, the vast majority of our community ministries at City Church have been birthed out of a concern for others. And our ministries are an opportunity for us to practically express that concern. Food Bank, Baby Bank, I-58, Helping Hands, the new venture of Coats for Kids. These are all opportunities for us to practically express our concern. We're investing in a student worker right now because we are concerned about the thousands of students in our city who need to connect with Jesus. During this period of lockdown, I've been greatly encouraged by the concern that has been expressed through the envelopes that have appeared in the church office, some of them marked for a needy family, others for people in need. I've been encouraged by those who brought in food and clothes and kids' coats and school uniforms and all sorts of stuff for babies. And all of this has been done because of a concern. Now, it's clear in these verses that their concern was a blessing to Paul. But we see in these verses that there was more to it than that, too. You see, this practical concern of expression was and is registered in heaven. We are told that God takes note of such acts. When the Philippians gave, they weren't just giving to Paul, they were giving to God. And this gift didn't just bring practical provision to Paul, it brought pleasure to God. We read in verse 18, the gifts you sent They are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. This expression of concern didn't just bring a blessing to the recipient, it brought pleasure to God. You know, it's amazing to think that as we express concern practically, we don't only bless people, but we bring pleasure to God. And our expressions of concern are like the fragrant aroma of an offering, an acceptable sacrifice which God welcomes and in which he delights. As the receiver, Paul would benefit, but as the givers, they would also benefit. And so as we read these verses, we see that the recipient is blessed, God is blessed, and we also see that the giver is blessed. Verse 17 in the message speaks of the blessing that issues from generosity. And there is a blessing that comes from generosity. And Paul points out to the Philippians that there is a blessing on its way to them because of their generosity. And I want you to know today that there is a blessing on its way to you because of your generosity. 
Looking at these verses, we see that Paul is quick to point out that he is far more interested in what their giving does for them than in what it does for him. J.B. Phillips translates it like this. It isn't the value of the gift that I'm keen on. It is the reward that will come to you because of the gifts that you have made. The revised version speaks of the benefit that comes from giving. And so in these verses, we see that benefits and rewards are linked to practical expressions of concern. Their expression of concern, their generosity would open doors of supply for them. In fact, in verse 17, Paul says it would be accredited to their account. They had given out, God would put back in. What they had given would be given back to them. And the same is true for us. And if not in this life, then certainly in the life to come. No wonder Jesus said it is more blessed to give than to receive. And so concerned, concern expressed brings blessing to all involved. Now, as we move on, we come to what is possibly one of the most misused and abused verses in the Bible. It's verse 19, which says, And my God will meet all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Like you, I have heard many people proclaim this verse and claim it as a promise. God will meet all my needs. And many of us have experienced his meeting of our needs and we have glorious stories to tell of his provision. But friends, this verse is not a carte blanche statement. It has a context. It is a promise, but it is a conditional promise. You know, the context of this verse is that when we meet the needs of others, he meets our needs. We don't earn it. Rather, we position ourselves for it and we position ourselves for it by meeting the needs of others. So having provided for Paul, God would provide for them. He would meet all their needs. That was Paul's confident boast. And so it is that as we make the most of opportunities that we are presented with to express concern, that he will meet all our needs too. Now, whilst Paul rejoices greatly in this expression of concern, we see in these verses that he wasn't dependent on it. He had come to a place in his life, a place we would all do well to come to, and that's the place of contentment. Look at verse 10. I rejoiced greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him, Christ, who gives me strength. You know, COVID-19 is not the only virus that is rampant today. Discontent is a virus that is also rampant in our society. Most of today's advertising appeals to the discontent so many people feel in their lives. You need the latest product or gadget, a bigger house, a faster car, look younger, look slimmer, get fitter, wear the right labels and so on. This is the antidote to discontentment. However, the truth is it doesn't work because there's always bigger, there's always better, there's always faster, there's always more that you need to have. For many people, Contentment is based around circumstances. The better the circumstances, the more content we will feel. However, this is very different to what Paul says. When Paul speaks about the contentment he knows in his life, 
we see that it is a contentment that is not based on pleasant circumstances. Paul's personal circumstances were far from the best, but he states, I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. The contentment Paul knew and experienced was not based on his circumstances. The contentment Paul has in mind is a contentment that can be known whatever the circumstances. He knew what it was to be in need. He also knew what it was to have plenty. And in it all, he learnt the secret of being content in any and every situation. That's what it says in verse 12. Whether I am well fed or hungry, whether I am living in a place of plenty or in want, I've learnt the secret of being content. You know, this sense of contentment was not something that just dropped into Paul's lap. It was something he had learned. And he learned it by experiencing need, by experiencing hunger and by being in want. You know, it's often in the difficult times, by going through things we'd rather not go through, by facing things we'd rather not face, that we come out of them with a revelation of God we would never have had had we not gone through them. And that was certainly the case for Paul. I have learned the secret of being content, whatever is happening. And in verse 13, he gives us an insight into that secret. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. The secret of Paul's contentment is that it's based on Christ and the strength that he gives in all the circumstances and situations of life. It's not dependent on what is out there, but on what and who is in here. Paul points to Jesus and says, it's through Christ who gives me the strength. That's how I can be content. The strength to live in whatever may come our way. Some of us can look back on situations we have had to live in. We didn't think we were going to get through, but here we are today. We lived through it. And how did we live through it? Because of his strength. He strengthened us. He strengthens us. He enabled us to cope and he will enable us to cope in every situation. We may be weak, but he is strong and his strength is going to be displayed in our weakness. His strength is going to be displayed in the situations and circumstances of life. You see, the secret of contentment is making Jesus our sufficiency. We can face all these challenges and trials, successes and failures with and because of Jesus. I want to say today, he is more than enough. He is all we need. And so contentment is not based on what we have, but on whose we are and the reality of his strength in our lives. Like Paul, I pray that we will increasingly come to the place of contentment, whatever our circumstances. And so what we have seen the Philippians concern. We have looked at Paul's contentment. And in this final moment, we just want to look at the concluding comments. There are three things Paul mentions. Glory to God, greetings to the saints and grace to you. And friends, very quickly, glory to God. To God be all the glory. Our aim in life is to bring glory to God. Our aim is that God might have the glory. As individuals and as a church, we want to bring glory to God. To God be the glory. Oh, I trust that in everything we say and in everything we do, that he will always have the glory. Let's make that a name in our life. To God be the glory. Then he offers greetings to the saints. Greet the saints. And, and the interesting thing here that I just want to mention is, is the fact that, you know, Paul may be in lockdown, but he's not living in isolation. 
He's mindful of the fact that he's part of the family, the saints, the people of God, the family of God. We've been in lockdown. We're emerging from lockdown. We may end up back in lockdown, but we don't live in isolation. We're part of a community, part of a family, the saints. Keep connected to the family. Keep connected to the saints. Keep the connection as we navigate through this difficult time. Don't forget the saints. And then the final thing he says is grace to you. You know, Paul started this letter with a greeting of grace. And as he ends it, he ends with a greeting of grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen, he says. You know, this Christian journey is a journey of grace. It starts with the grace of God touching our lives in salvation and it ends with the grace of God when we stand in glory. And I want to tell you, everything in between is all about the grace of God to grace to you. Let it surround your lives. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind. But now I see through many dangers, toils and snares I have already come. Tis grace has brought me safe thus far and grace will lead me home. Friends, may his amazing grace continually surround us as we stand together with all the saints, giving him all the glory. Father, I want to thank you for the message that we have shared together today. I want to thank you for the concern that is expressed. And when that concern is expressed in practical ways, it not only blesses people, but it brings pleasure to you. And I pray that we will be men and women who practically express concern, blessing others and bringing pleasure to you. Father, just as Paul had learned the secret of contentment in life, I pray that we also would learn the secret of contentment, that we would find our source and our supply and our strength in Jesus only. And Father, we pray that we would always bring you glory. To God be the glory. May we be mindful of the fact that we belong to your family and may we be mindful of the saints, that we are numbered among the saints. And we thank you for your amazing grace that touched our lives, that brought us into the family, that keeps us in the family and that will lead us on. May your grace always surround us. And Father, thank you for all the lessons we have learned as we've journeyed through this letter that came to the Philippian believers in a time uh, of Paul's Lockdown, And I pray as we apply the truth of your word to our lives and as we seek to walk in it, that we will be blessed in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you, everybody.
good morning City Church, this is Peter and Monique again and this morning we are going to be leading us all through communion uh, but firstly we're going to start with two verses. I'm going to be reading Matthew 27 51 and behold the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom and the earth shook and the rocks were split. And uh, my reading is from Hebrews 4 verse 16. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. So at the moment, uh, we are definitely in a time of need. We are definitely in a time of need for grace and mercy. And we don't quite realize until there are uh, changes in our circumstances quite how awesome and how important God's grace and mercy is and it's through taking the bread and the wine that we remind ourselves that we have been given the grace through Jesus' sacrifice and that we, uh, we do have, should have the confidence to get more grace for our time of need. And it's not just the confidence, but it's also a joy, an amazing joy that we can just come straight to God's throne room because of Jesus' blood for those who have received him by faith. And it's uh, as though just children going to a parent in whatever room they may be in the house, a child can access the parent and just enjoy conversation, enjoy food at the uh, kitchen table. And uh, I really feel and believe um, that God at the moment is really calling his family to say, seek my grace and my mercy. Pray for my grace and my mercy. Think about, meditate on my grace and mercy. Because we, honestly, we don't know exactly what's gonna happen the rest of this year. We were gobsmacked, all of us. The last few months, no one could have foresaw, foresaw this, that in the end of 2019, everyone was uh, thinking that 2020 is gonna be a perfect year of vision. It's gonna be a wonderful, uh, positive year. And then we've just been hit with this uh, outbreak. And we have no idea what's gonna happen in 2021 and how that year is gonna look like. Apart from we do know, and we have complete confidence that just as God is merciful and gracious in the year 2020. He's also going to be the same God of 2021 as he is in this year, as he was last year, as he always is. So uh, God's heart at the moment is for us to really seek his mercy and his grace. So as we um, take communion together, as we uh, close our eyes and just think, let's just meditate on approaching his throne of grace and receiving what we need in our time of need at the moment. Father, we worship you. Father, we glorify you. Father, we just praise you for sending your son so that that veil in that temple could be torn from top to bottom. There wasn't a single thread that was left on that, on that rope. Father, we thank you that now we have direct access to your throne because of the blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, that we once were lost and now we are found. We thank you, Father God, that we can just call upon the name of Jesus and he is here in our midst. We thank you, Father God, that we have such confidence because of what you have already done and what you have already given us. So, Father, we just praise you for your sacrifice and we just ask, Lord, that you would increase our understanding and our awareness and revelation of the power of your sacrifice and what that means in our daily lives. And Lord, help us to 
seek your wisdom and your mercy and your grace. Lord, please just give us discernment and insight in how we can daily seek your grace and your mercy, for we need you always. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, we read that there are times for things to happen. There is a time when a season begins and a time when that season ends. Today, as we say farewell to our youth pastor, we are not only marking the end of a season, but the start of a new season in Dustin's life and ministry and also in the life and ministry of this house. I know you will join me in acknowledging and appreciating the investment that Dustin has made, not only in the lives of so many of our young people, but also in our lives too, as he has provoked and challenged and encouraged us in our walk with the Lord. This morning, we want to place on record our sincere thanks for the time and energy expanded in serving this house, not only in the context of youth ministry, but in many other areas of church life too. Dustin, we thank you. We also want to thank Harris for the support she has given to Dustin and for serving alongside him and also for Caris's contribution to the women's ministry. Caris, we thank you too. As a church, we have been delighted to have Braden and Myler as part of our family. And on behalf of our City Church kids, Naomi will be dropping off some gifts to Braden and Myler. As a token of our appreciation as a church, we will be presenting Dustin and Caris with a significant financial gift. And we really do hope that it will be a blessing to you at this time. You know, doing what God has called us to do is never easy, but there is always a blessing in it. And Dustin and Caris, we pray that as you do what he is calling you to do, you will be incredibly blessed. I'm going to hand over to Nicole now, and after that, Dustin will share a few words, and then it's back to me for a prayer. Thank you. Good morning, this is Nicole, and if you don't know who I am, I'm one of the youth leaders here at City Church Swansea, and I just want to say a quick thank you message to Dustin on behalf of the youth team and the youth themselves. We have been so grateful and thankful to have had a youth leader who has been so committed and so devoted to this ministry. Um, we are so grateful for just how you've been so faithful to God over the years and how that in itself has been reflected in all the work that you have done. Um, thank you so much that you have been so focused on mentorship, how you have have lifted so many people's lives up and encouraged people um, to walk alongside God throughout all different circumstances in life. Um, and as well as you have created environments for young people to grow and flourish, um, to be able to learn more about God and to grow deeper in their relationships with one another. Um, thank you so much for all of your commitment, for all of your service. It has been so appreciated by so many people and you have changed and transformed so many people's lives over the years. So thank you so much. Um, and I just want to say a blessing over your life. Um, I thank you, Dustin, for just everything that you've done and I pray in this next season that God will just fill you with peace and excitement that this is in an exciting new time for you and I just pray that God will start revealing to you um, new things that he's going to bring you into um, and so I pray that this time will just be just a great time with God in just exploring more of what he's going to use your life for. Um, and I pray even in this time where you are relaxing and having a holiday uh, with your family, even though it's in the UK, um, I just, yeah, pray that God really blesses um, 
those relationships in your lives with your family and your friends um, and that you will just, yeah, grow deeper in those things as well. Um, so again, Dustin, thank you so much for everything that you've done. You are so appreciated and we thank you for everything that you have done over the years. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Brayden's back there and Myla's back there somewhere. Karis is driving, I'm not driving and recording at the same time, not that skilled. Uh, anyways, we just wanted to say some thanks. We were asked to share a little video, obviously weird times, Zoom, um, and online church, things like that. So uh, we don't get to see everybody, but um, yeah, I guess uh, I'd like to give some thanks. And I'd like to thank the team I worked with um, amazing people, um, gifted, committed, um, just for the last nine, ten years, um, I've worked close with some, like, uh, really just, uh, people that sacrifice their Fridays, uh, sacrifice other days in the week as well in order to, to prepare lessons, uh, things like that. They took off a week of holiday time um, Sometimes up to two weeks of holiday time in order to do like Soul Survivor Limitless Festival alive some of these events that we did um, The youth team have just been amazing um, And there's a lot of people to thank and I'm going back to when I first started all the interns that I've had um, to the team that I have I have now and they've done amazing. There are times where people have said, you know, they thought of youth group as, you know, eating cake and kicking newspapers across the floor. But the youth team, the youth team always knew what we what we were doing um, and the seriousness we 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 had with what we were doing. Um, and uh, yeah, and all of the festivals we went to. Uh, I remember hearing somebody once say that it was a holiday, and and. The crazy thing is I remember, you know, the youth team, we having to deal with somebody, one of the young people almost broke their neck and um, having to take them to uh, the emergency room and and all types of stuff, you know, panic attacks, people not eating. And just to say the youth team have just been brilliant, have been great. And I just want to give them uh, a big thank you. And I've tried to be consistent throughout this whole time and just have that sort of gratitude towards them. So, um, so yeah, and as well, I just wanna say thanks to everybody in the church who had no affiliation with the youth. Um, and I guess I would say, I guess I would say is, um, I'm just really surprised at the support um, and the people hearing that um, uh, of me leaving. Um, yeah, just the messages, the cards, the phone calls, the gifts sent to the house. I mean, I, I, you guys are on it. Like the older generation, uh, I didn't think you were paying attention too much, you know, not, not in a disrespectful way, but you're on it, you know, and, and um, you, you, you see a lot. And, um, and uh, yeah, I think just to hear the appreciation you had for my contribution in the adult church and other areas of, uh, of church, um, so anyway, I just want to say thanks for the support and everything. So um, uh, we will still be in Swansea. Uh, we are alive and well. Um, say hello, give us a message. And just because we don't go to the same place on a Sunday doesn't mean that we still can't be in each other's lives, encouraging, being there, because um, that is the body of Christ. That is that is the church. Um, so, so yeah, anyways, thank you all and, uh, appreciate all the support throughout the years. And so would you join me as we pray together? Father, we thank you for Dustin, Karis, Braden, and Myla, and for their time among us. We thank you for the contribution they have made and for the lives that have been blessed, and for all those who have benefited during this season. 
Father, we know that you are no man's debtor and that you reward us and bless us accordingly. We know that this family will be rewarded and blessed by you. And as they continue to follow you and walk in your ways, we are confident that you will reward them and bless them even more. Father, we pray that you will surprise them with all that you have in store for them, where you will take them and what you will do for them in them, with them, and through them. May it be even more than all they imagined. And so Dustin, Caris, Braden, and Myla, we pray that the Lord will bless you and protect you. May his face radiate with joy because of you. May he be gracious to you, show you his favour, and give you his peace. And everyone said, Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. We believe you have been immensely blessed. And to all that led us throughout the worship today, thank you, God bless you. Um, some of our activities will not be taking place during the week, as we know, if you have read our um, weekly emails. Please look, at, look on the church website and on all our social media platforms for other activities you can key into during the week. Yeah, that's right. Um, though some activities are not taking place, we still have a lot going on. So please feel free to join us and um, look out, like Danny said, on our social media pages and the church website for details and information on that. I would um, please continue to pray for our church members. Um, they need your prayers and we'll continue to pray for you as well. We look forward to seeing you next Sunday and God bless you all. So from us then is goodbye. Bye. God bless you. God bless you.